Welcome back to the channel. This is my 1571 disk drive which we have repaired in previous episodes. Today we're going to be replacing the power supply. We're going to replace that power supply with this little tiny Meanwell RD35A. Now keep watching until the end of the video because at the end of this video we're going to be unboxing this. This is... well I'm not going to tell you what it is but find out. Meanwhile, meanwhile, RD35A, 1571, let's do it. Right, shall we take this apart? Okay, so this is the power supply and we are going to replace it. Okay, we don't need that for now. Right, the meanwhile has to go onto this plate. And we have 240 volts, it's labelled, and neutral. So, these are just spade terminals, we can take those off. I need to unscrew those. Okay, so what we're going to do is draw around this to get an outline. And then we can cut that out and that was going to form our template. Those are our screw holes. So these are M3 screws. And that's about a millimetre thick, so we need M3 by, not very much, by six, I suppose. That arrow indicates where the terminals are. We can then position this, make sure it's nice and square. Measure twice, cut once. Let's just check with this installed and then there's any clearance issues. Now the trench between the chips and ideally I'd like the screws to be in the trench between the chips because we know that there's not a huge amount of clearance there which is why I had to take the heat sinks off these Unfortunately, we can't raise this tray up. Much as it, it's going to, it's going to fit with no trouble. But okay, so just eyeball. That's the trench. So we want the lines to line up with that. Approximately. Okay, so that's where we need to drill our holes. I'll go away and drill the holes and then we can come back and mount the power supply and start to wire it up. Now. We know that those two are going to go there. Ground is going to join onto that. And the output is going to go to this other connector, which plugs into here. Now, 
This is the original connector. I don't want to cut this up because that would stop us putting the old power supply back if we wanted to. So I'm going to make up a new cable. The holes are now drilled and we can fit the power supply. So Now we can actually use the screws that came out of the um, voltage regulators that were fixed to the back of the unit. There we go. Just check that this actually fits in. Yeah, no trouble at all. No trouble at all. Okay, so that's ground. This is neutral because it's blue. This is alive because it's black. Actually, because it goes through the switch. Right, I'm going to cut this wire off because it's not really long enough. There we go, and then we're gonna replace it with one that's the right color for the UK. Okay, so we can try fitting the power supply into the case just to make sure that it's going to go. Now the cable that was uh, connecting it to the old power supply is not going to fit. We, I didn't want to use it anyway, but we can see that if we plug this in, it's not going to reach where the connectors are. So we need to cut a new, a new cable. Now I've got some connectors which are not quite the same, but you see they are um, polarized. So they are going to go on and they will fit there. So we can make up a cable using uh, one of those. So we need, I'm going to use the red for five volts, the yellow for 12 volts, and of course the black for ground or common. So we need to go from there to about there. So call it that long. Let's just check. Yeah, that's longer. Right, okay, so. Now they have to go into this connector in the same order. So two things are on the top. So the red one goes in this end. Red one, then the black one. Then the yellow one. Then the other black one.
Okay. Yeah. So the two black ones are common. The red one is V1. And the yellow one is V2. goes under there. Right, let's do a smoke test. Excellent! That did everything it was supposed to do. The green light came on, it came out, the power light is on. The little green light is on in the back. So hopefully you can see it. Yeah. Five point one. Eleven point eight six. Perfect. So we can put the lid back on. And there we have one Commodore 1571 with a Meanwell power supply. Now at the start of this video I promised you a little bonus with this unboxing. If you've watched until now then uh, well done, thumbs up. So let's do this unboxing. Let's see what we've got. Okay, quick slurp. Right, let's open it. Okay, we've got some ribbon cables. We've got a bag of bits. And we've got something else. This is going to be the paperwork. Yeah, that's paperwork. We've got a ribbon cable and we've got a power cable. We could have almost used that on the 1571. Looks like a floppy drive power cable. Look back in there.
and this we've got some pin headers we've got a 65C02 and we've got some DIN connectors and now this This is a PC Bay PCB fifteen eighty one disc two five three two two five two three two six reverse engineered by DIY Chris twenty twenty two revision two fifteen eighty one replica. This is going to be a 1581. So this is a new project upcoming for the corner. We are going to build a 1581. Now we can 3D print the case and to that end I've already started. So I've got the front panel which came off the um, printer earlier this morning. Looks a bit rough on the back but that's all right. It's the front panel that matters, so and you can see the design similarities with the 1571. The 3D print filament is not quite the same colour, it's not quite a colour match, but it's not far off. So it's um, it's called light ivory, which I think is quite nice. So I still have the rest of the case to print. The top and the bottom are something like 16 hour prints each. So, uh, you know, that's going to take some time. And... I need to start getting the components for the rest of this board in order to put it all together. So we've got a lot more chips, we've got uh, resistors, we've got ferrite beads, we've got switches, we've got LEDs, we've got chips, all that to find. And once I've found them all, then we shall build it. This is very much an 8-bit floppy drive and uh, we can use an existing drive mechanism um, from either an Amiga drive or a PC drive or anything like that and I'm sure I've got something lying around that will do the job. Um, depending on the mechanism we might need a different mounting bracket to fit it into the case but that's that's something that we will um, discover as we go along. So that's our little surprise, that's our little unboxing, that's our little project to come. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. See ya! Let's do that again without wobbling, 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 wibbling, wibbling, wobbling, wibbling, wobbling, 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 wobbling,